In this video, I'm going to explain a method from the ERC721 standard called safe transfer from. I'm also going to cover a method called safe mint, which is technically not part of the ERC721 standard, but it is part of the ERC721 implementation by OpenZeppelin. If you're using OpenZeppelin to create NFTs, then your NFTs are being created using the safe mint method. Safe transfer from and safe mint are verifying that the address that is receiving the tokens are implementing a method called on ERC721 received. If the receiving contract does not implement on ERC721 received, then your ERC721 smart contract knows that it's not safe to send tokens to that address. This helps prevent tokens from getting stuck when users accidentally send their tokens to a contract address that does not support that token. If a token is owned by an address that belongs to a person, then that person can initiate the transfer. On the other hand, if that token belongs to an address that is held by a smart contract, then the smart contract has to support ERC-20 or ERC-721 in order to initiate the transfer of those tokens. If the contract doesn't know about ERC-721, then the tokens will be stuck in that contract. The way they might communicate is that contract 1 could ask contract 2, do you support these ERC-721 tokens? If contract 2 says yes, then contract 1 will go ahead and send the tokens to contract 2. However, if contract 2 says that it doesn't support ERC-721 tokens, then the first contract knows not to send the tokens to contract 2 because the tokens would simply get stuck in contract 2. Before the sending contract sends the tokens to the recipient, the sending contract is going to call the on ERC721 received method on the recipient contract. If the receiving contract returns on ERC721 received.selector, then the sending contract knows that it's safe to send the tokens over because the sending contract knows that the receiving contract is able to handle those ERC721 tokens. But what exactly is this on ERC721 received dot selector? This selector is basically a bunch of bytes that in hexadecimal looks like this. This value is constant and it's never going to change. In the Solidity language, bytes4 refers to a fixed length array of 4 bytes. Selector is 4 bytes whose value is this hexadecimal value. The 0x in front means that this is a hexadecimal representation. And each pair of characters represents 1 byte. So 1 and 5 represent the first byte, 0 and b represent the second byte, and 7 and a represent the third byte. Let's look at the Open Zeppelin implementation to see how this works in practice. If I search for safe transfer from, I can see that safe transfer from is calling this safe transfer method. If I search for safe transfer, we can see that safe transfer is calling this other method called check on ERC721 received. I see that safe mint is also calling check on ERC721 received. Now let's look at the implementation of check on ERC721 received. We see that this makes a call to invoke the method on ERC721 received on the target address. And we only want to execute this call if the target address is a smart contract. If the receiving address is a smart contract, then we're going to call this method on the smart contract called on ERC721 received. This method is going to return bytes 4, which is 4 bytes. If the return value matches the value of the selector, which is the hexadecimal value that we saw earlier, then we're going to return true, saying that it's a match, otherwise we return false. If the receiving address does not implement on ERC721 received, then we're going to revert the transaction saying transfer to non ERC721 receiver implementer. If there is some other kinds of failure with a reason, then we're going to enter this else statement and also revert the transaction. In the safe mint and safe transfer from functions, we're going to require that the result of calling that check on ERC721 received is true. Otherwise, we're going to revert. I can show you what that on ERC721 received selector looks like with this example smart contract. This contract exposes a method get on ERC721 received selector, which returns bytes for and it's going to return the ERC721 received dot selector. I've already deployed this contract onto the RinkB testnet. So now we can call that method to see what that hexadecimal looks like. And it looks like this. This hexadecimal is constant, which means that any smart contract that implements this on ERC721 received is always going to be returning these four bytes whenever a contract wants to call safe transfer from or safe mint and send token to that contract. We can also use this smart contract to see what the error message looks like when safe transfer from tries to send a token to a contract that does not support receiving ERC721 tokens. In the constructor of this smart contract, I already minted 10 NFTs to myself. So now I can use Etherscan and try to send these NFTs to a contract that does not support ERC721 tokens. On the Rinkby testnet, I also have a contract from an earlier video about doing a commit reveal. 
This commit reveal contract does not implement on ERC721 received. As you can see, this contract does not inherit from any other contracts. It's just 30 lines long, and there's nothing here about returning the on ERC721 received selector. If any NFTs are sent to this smart contract, those NFTs will be locked in this smart contract forever because there's no way for the smart contract to transfer the NFTs to anyone else. Back on my NFT contract, I'm now going to send those tokens using safe transfer from to that recipient contract. This transfer should fail because as we saw, the receiving address is the address for a smart contract that is not able to return the selector. I can quickly see that the safe transfer from did indeed fail. And the status clearly states transfer to non-ERC721 receiver implementer. You should remember, however, that just because a contract returns the selector doesn't mean that that contract actually can handle NFTs. You could easily create a contract that returns the selector, but doesn't do anything else. The fact that a smart contract implements on ERC721 received and returns the selector means that the author is at least aware of this receiver interface but it doesn't truly guarantee that that contract can support NFTs. That's not in the scope of the ERC721 receiver interface, and it's also not in the scope of ERC721. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.